I watched the presentation Financial Planning for Your Autism Family by Ryan Platt. Approximately one in every 59 children are born with autism. Albert Einstein. Dr. Einstein had no speech until age three. Steve Jobs. He was a loner. He brought snakes to school. Leonardo da Vinci. This man was far advanced on the autism spectrum. I'm not naughty. I'm autistic. And I just get too much information. This is Lloyd I.M. and you're listening to Takiwatanga, Love Not Cure, Exploring Autism One Strength at a Time. Ryan is a chartered financial consultant a certified family business specialist, and a chartered special needs consultant. He founded a special needs plan in 2005 that is now a recognized firm in the U.S. He helped families with members who have special needs develop plan or plans to support their future. This episode is not a financial advice. Any ideas mentioned in this content are key points that I have noted down during the Autism Parenting Summit. If you need support with your family's financial planning, reach out to a registered financial advisor near you. There are a lot of things that parents must be on top of, like bills to pay, school activities with kids, and not to mention the journey of autism. Note that this is not about me complaining about my problems, nor comparing my problems with others. Problems will always be there. Besides, having problems or challenges is just part of being alive. But... It will be my fault as a parent if I do not do anything about my challenges, my problems. It is my fault if I stay silent and do nothing. If I do nothing about my kids' future, about our families, about my autistic son's future, then it is my fault. I know this is not a panic and there's no point to do so, so we have to be pragmatic about it. Most of the time, and speaking out of experience, we are focused more on addressing current problems. This is a fair statement because these are important and urgent things to address. I also certainly believe that there are things that are important but not urgent things in life that we also need to look at before they become urgent. They become urgent and come to us and bite us. Let me give you an example. One of the problems we have right now that I see urgent is having a teacher aid support for my child. It's super urgent because it has something to do with his education right now. And he's already progressing on his own term, not at school. And most likely he is being left behind because he only attends school for a few hours and then his peers are having a full uh, time at school. I did talk about that ORS request in episodes uh, 13 and 14. And right now that is urgent because of uh, safety concerns. And because we are busy solving that, that problem, we neglect to look at the air, other areas of our autism journey. Like, what will be the daily living look like for my kids when they grow up? Especially for my youngest son. Do we need to involve the siblings in looking after the child in, in some way? If yes, how much of their time? Where will he live when he grow up? Those are the things that right now, they are important, but we neglect them. And once that time arrives in our lives, that will bite us. Now, only time will tell before we realize that we have failed to secure his future. He may have no ability to do so or to do this on his own, and we do not know what that future would look like for him. Not that we should be anxious or too anxious about it because uh, the future uh, hasn't arrived yet, but it would be great to at least have a plan in place for the, for the best and for the sake of everyone in the family. Someone once said, and I love this phrase, if you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. If you are like me, we already have a lot of things going on with life and perhaps securing the future of our kids is one of the things that we commonly neglect and overlook. And then here comes the future. I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have done this. But do not worry, it's not the end of the world yet. We still have time and we can still navigate the boat and we can still look at what we can do today, right here, right now, and alter the course of the, of the future for us. Here are the three key points I have noted down. The first one is current story. The second one is future story. And the third one is action. 
your current story, every family is different. We have different needs to sustain our day-to-day -day living, nurture our kids, and survive the day for the future. The question you have to ask yourself right now is, what's your story today? What's your story now? What's your family's story right now? Don't start looking at the future to address any potential problems that you may have seen or you might be seeing. If you have no awareness of your story right now, then you have to have an awareness, obviously. If you have problems with your health, food, or place to stay, you have to solve those problems first before you can look at the future and try to address some of the potential problems of the future. You cannot support your family if you need someone to support you. That's pretty obvious. So it is crucial to be honest with yourself right now and then look at what the needs or what are your needs so that you can address them. Abraham Maslow, the guy who introduced the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in 1943, has this idea of the theory of human motivation. What this means is that you cannot be motivated to self-actualize unless you are addressing the most fundamental needs of life. You cannot help support your family, your friend, or anyone else in your life if your fundamental self-needs are not met. What are the fundamental self-needs? These are food, health, sleep, or feeling being secured. These are the foundational needs a human being needs to meet before this human being, us, can self-actualize and fulfill some of the, the greatest things in life like helping others, helping our families, our friends. So now what? Know your story very well. Address all your fundamental needs as parents. So parents need to be secure or secured in order for parents to provide security for kids. Simple as that. Now, if you have addressed your needs, it's time to plot your next story or story of the future and share it. Your future story. To plot your future story, you have to know your why, what, and how. Your why is your reason why you're doing what you're doing. Ryan said, if you plan for the future, you are securing the future of someone you love, especially those who do not have the ability to do so on their own. If we don't do it, then who will? Most people don't talk about planning because of the impression that this is about death. Parents leaving their kids or about sadness. Planning is not about parents dying, but it's about parents and children living the best days of their lives. Having kids getting the best benefits entitled to them and having the best structure in place for the future. Studies suggest that 15%, this 15%, all right, of the world has an intellectually or has an intellectual disability. That's 15% of the world. So how many are we around the world? We are about 7.9 billion across the planet and 15% is about 1.18 billion and that's a lot. 75% of adults with disabilities are isolated and they live with parents. So while 52% of caregivers spend 40 hours or more per week caring for the disabled, these caring hours will consume most of parents or a person's entire week. Yeah, for sure. Siblings love their brother and or their sister, but parents' love is immeasurable. So when a parent passes away, siblings have their own lives, family, and problems. It's a huge, huge responsibility to ask siblings to look after a disabled family member. So knowing your why helps fuels you to make the necessary actions so that no one in the family suffers. Your what. If your why helps you focus on what really matters, your what is basically uh, knowing what is important for you and your family, and then it's about knowing what your child needs. It's about looking at options that can, in the future, support your child. You don't have to come up with a decision at this point. Just think about what are the things that you think best. It's about the structure you see fit. The goal is always going to be putting the right structure for your child's daily living to happen even when you are gone. Here are some 
uh, key ideas on how to put your what in place. First, you breathe. Just breathe and enjoy the journey. No decision has to happen at this stage, like I said. All you have to do is just think about what you want as a parent or care for your child. It's about thinking what the future would look like for your child. Think what options are available, who can be part of your journey, when to start. There are things that you can start looking into as well. Second, gather up your team. When you have visualized what you want for your child, it's time to gather up your team. In episode one, I did mention that you have to find a team who will fight your corner. Your team could be another family member, friends, groups who advocates autism, your local community, and so on. This team will be your support team. They will help you and guide you and support you achieve what you have planned out. Make a list of your team who you think will be best in supporting your autistic child. From top to bottom, list the person or organization and their roles. You can assign a lookout. This is the person who will be an oversight, someone who can check in on a regular basis. And then depending on the need, this could be on a daily basis, weekly, or maybe monthly. And then you can list down as well the living arrangement of housing. This is about where you think it's best for your child to live. How is the access to groceries? How about access to hospitals, recreation, and some essential things your child needs? And then you will need to consider money management as well. Can your child work to sustain his or her daily living? If only part-time, how many hours per week can your child work? How will his finance finances be managed? If you leave a sum of money, who will manage that sum of money? How can your child get the maximum government benefits even if you left a decent amount of money? And then you can also list down the legal structure. Include this in your planning because this will also cover bullets one to three. Find an expert in your area. Again, I am not an expert. Find an expert who can help you build the structure with you. Third, journal it. If you have the structure in place and you have talked to experts, have secured a plan for your child, journal it. Write down your team list and roles and contact information. What medications are needed? You can write down what are the therapy days, who will be part of your child's life and who will not. Write down who can access your child's funds. These are the things you have captured in your legal requirements. Once you have the plan written, share this information with your team and let them aware about the plan. Now, your how. After identifying your why and what, it's time for your how. If you are just starting out in this path, it is not necessary to know how you are going to accomplish the plan. Ryan said, you are not going to have all the answers at this stage. As long as you have the base plan, the rest will follow. Most answers will come over time as you take action. This now leads to our next important thing, your action. It is great to have a plan, but if you will not take action, your plan will just a piece of paper. You don't have to have everything at once, or you don't have to do everything at once. You just have to start with one action, that's it. One small action where you can feel a sense of satisfaction then this will lead to another action fulfilled and to another action until you have accomplished what your plan is. As mentioned, you do not have to worry about how, just start the process. This could be calling a family member and discuss the plan in your mind. Or you can also call, it, call your friend and talk about the said plan. Calling an expert in your area, looking after available options, available places that your son can live or your child or your daughter can live, or maybe calling the school and asking what options are available for your child. That's it. No major drama at this point. Just do the first step after you have list down your plan. Just remember that planning for the future doesn't have to be complex and worrisome. You just have to identify your why, why you're doing this, what are your goals, and the how will come as you navigate towards fulfilling your goals. Define your current story, 
know what are the fundamental needs you have to address first before writing up your future story. Write up your plan with any available options around, then gather up your team and ask for support. Show them what you're intending to do. And lastly, take action. Start applying what you have planned out by doing small actionable steps towards fulfilling your goals. Remember the phrase I mentioned earlier, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. But I'm going to add further to that phrase. If you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. But what is worse than having a plan without action? So you heard this one first here. That's my take after watching Financial Planning for Your Autism Family by Ryan Platt. Click that like button if you think you find this content helpful and then smash that subscribe button so others can also find us. Ring that notification bell so you get notified when your content or when new content arrives. Every tangata fai takewa tanga is different. If you fail with one strategy, don't stop. Keep moving forward. Always remember that for every failure you encounter is one step closer to your success. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, me muto te pakawahire. Let's stop judging others. Me mahi tahi tato. Let's all work together. Kia ka, kia maya, be brave and be strong.